Hey and welcome back. So today we're going to talk about sprites on the Commodore 64. Now it's a pretty big topic so we should uh, get started pretty soon. But before we really get started we need to define what a sprite really is. Now, I see some confusion about this online uh, when people discuss sprites. So let's just take a quick look at what they actually are. So. Here's a screenshot from one of my favorite uh, Commodore 64 games, Monty on the Run. So, what are sprites? Well, this is our little player character. Now, he can move left and right, and he can jump, and he can interact with stuff. So, he is a sprite. These two guys, these are the enemies. They're moving up and down like this. And they are also sprites. So, in general, oh, I say in general, uh, you could say that things that are moving around smoothly on the screen are usually sprites. Now, the reason that I'm a little vague about this is that, once again, if you're super good at programming, then you can do it another way. But usually, things that are moving around like this like the player and the enemies, usually they will be sprites. So that's what we're going to take a look at today. So if you played games on the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System, things work a little differently because um, this little guy here, uh, technically it's not one sprite because on the Nintendo Entertainment System, the sprites are 8 by 8 pixels. So for example, in Super Mario Bros. 1, uh, he would be made up of 4 sprites like this. So that's the Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, for the Commodore 64, it's a little different. The sprites are much bigger. So one sprite is 24 pixels wide and 21 pixels uh, tall. So, um, uh, on the NES, Nintendo, we would have to set uh, several uh, sprites together uh, in order to make something like a Mario character, something like that. Because if you just use one sprite, he would be so tiny that you barely could see him. But, on the Commodore 64, they are much bigger. So instead of like on the Nintendo where we have 8 by 8 pixels, here we have 24 by 21 pixels, which is enough that you could make a character that actually looks like something. So you could make a little guy with eyes and a hat and whatever. Now, you could combine several sprites on the Commodore 64 as well. But we're not going to uh, going to do that in this course. So um, let's just take a look at another thing right now. So uh, if you have played a lot of uh, Commodore 64 games, you might have noticed something. Sometimes you have sprites that look pretty smooth, kind of smooth looking. Then you have other sprites that are a little more blocky. Well, the thing is that the Commodore 64 can have two different kinds of sprites. So if you take a closer look here at the pixels, you can see that the pixels are much smaller on this green guy than on this guy down here. So if we take even a closer look, we can see that here, the sprites are twice as wide as up here. So here we had just have a normal tiny little square that's a pixel. But down here, those pixels are twice as wide. So why is that? Well, maybe you could uh, see something else here. This guy, this guy up here. He's just one single color. 
it's just one single color. This guy, he has one, two, three colors. So what's going on here is that this way of doing it is called high resolution sprites. And this is multicolor sprites. So you can uh, choose one or the other on the Commodore 64 and we can mix and match uh, sprites. But um, we are going to use this one in our game, the multicolor sprites. But it's important that we know that there are these ones as well. In fact, some games uh, even use a clever trick where they, uh, in order to make a smooth character and multicolor, they use two sprites. So they have one where they have um, a high resolution outline. So here I have used a black outline, but as you can see, it's very blocky. And the result is that this guy is a little <coughs> blocky looking. Now I could uh, make another sprite which matches this one in high resolution color. So he would have a very, sm very smooth edges. But that means that we have to use one sprite for multicolor, one sprite for the outline. So just by doing that, we are already using two sprites. But you could definitely do, definitely do that. And uh, several games did that in the 80s. All right. So let's take a look at how this actually works. So here I have made something that's supposed to look like an umbrella. Now, if you uh, take a closer look, you could see that every single cell here contains either a zero or a one. This, uh, this yellow cells, they have a one, and these ones have a zero. So, why have I done this? This. Well, this is to show you how it actually works inside the Commodore. So, of course, we are using a computer, so everything's zeros and ones at the end of the day. But, uh, let's look at the top row, row here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight zeros here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight plus eight, that's 16. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So 16 plus eight, that's 24. Now, if you remember, I just said that sprites on the Commodore 64 are 24 pixels wide. So that means that every pixel is one bit. And eight bits is one byte. So the top row here is actually three separate bytes. Okay. And the next line, same thing. And if we count down, uh, down here, we will find that I have 21 lines down here. And again, like I just mentioned a moment ago, sprites on the Commodore 64 are 21 pixels tall. So 21 times 24. So um, this is um, it's kind of easy to remember, but this is for the high resolution sprite. For the multicolor sprites, let's zoom in a little bit. It's a little different. So here I have, um, we have still uh, let's see, yeah, one, two, three bytes here at the top. So nothing's have nothing has changed like that. But 
there's something else going on here. Some of these cells are set up with one zero, one zero, one zero. So that means that um, we have um, now this is multicolor. So remember this, the pixels are twice as wide. So instead of having it like uh, the high resolution sprite where it's pretty simple, it's just one color. And for every one in here, that's a color of the, the pixel. That's, uh, let's say this was a yellow umbrella like we're seeing here. So for every one in here, and I said that my sprite should be yellow, so for every one, that's a yellow dot, yellow pixel, one, one, one. So that's pretty simple for high resolution sprites. For multicolor sprites, now remember we could have three, technically four different colors, but let's get come back to that. But um, for every, one zero that's one color for every one one that's another color for every zero one that's a third color so we are uh, in multicolor mode we are um, separating, first of all, like we already discussed, the sprites are twice as wide. So the reason for that is that now we have two bits for one pixel, one wide pixels. We have two bits for that. Here we had just one bit for a pixel. So here we have these smooth lines. Multicolor, it's a little more jaggy, so a little more blocky. But in order to have more colors, we need to do this. We need to have multicolor sprites. So a lot of games on the Commodore 64 have multicolor sprites because uh, then you could have more colorful sprites. Uh, but if it's more important to have smooth edges then we can have high resolution and in fact what we looked at earlier monty on the run uh, that was high resolution sprites that means that every one of those sprites with smooth edges can only have one color so multicolor and high resolution so uh, for the multicolor sprites we basically have three um, or four different combinations. We have zero, zero. All right, let's. Uh, okay, let me do it this way. Zero, zero. We have zero, one. We have one, zero. And we have one, one. Let's move those over here. And let's make them bigger. So we have these four combinations for our pixels with our multicolor sprites. So for our multicolor sprites, we have four different combinations. That's for four different colors. Now Let's just get this out of the way right now. I say four colors, but one of those four colors is a transparent color, which means, oh, I closed it. Okay. Well, which means that um, the, the, let's go back to this one actually. So this white area around the umbrella, that's transparent. Same thing here. This is transparent. 
So that means that we could move this sprite across the background and we would be able to see the background. Even if this, uh, let's say that this was a building, the umbrella was going to fly by the building. So when we um, starting to overlap, you would be able to see the background. Let's say it's moving this way. So here's the background coming in from this side. And when it's moving, the sprites moving across, you would be able to see it behind here in the transparent areas. Instead of just seeing a square with let's say a black background like this moving around. Hopefully you understand what I mean. The point is that this is a transparent area. So let's see where did I, uh, there we go. So uh, we have a transparent color and we have three other colors. Now, uh, one of those colors is the sprite color. So that means that one of these colors is specific to this sprite. And that's actually the same for this one. So sprites can have one color. Sprites can have one color. But wait a minute. What about this multicolor thing? Right. So I said that in practice there's there are three colors for multicolor sprites. One sprite color. So a sprite can have one color. But in multicolor mode, we could have two extra colors, which in total makes it three colors for one sprite. Now, those two extra colors are shared for every sprite. So we could have three colors, yes, but only one of those three colors is unique to this sprite. The other two colors that I use are shared for the all, all the sprites. So let's take a look at how this actually works. So here I am in an application called SpritePad. So don't worry about uh, the details of this application because in the next episode we will be taking a look at this application uh, more in detail, how it actually works. But it's a really good tool now to see how this actually works in practice. So first of all, let me just um, draw a sprite here. So I'm going to draw a high resolution sprite, as you can see. And something like that. Now, um, I didn't make it super smooth here, but um, but uh, from what we talked about earlier, you get the idea. We have some small square pixels here. And um, this is high, a high resolution sprite. Uh, so this is okay. But like we just discussed, we could only have one color for high resolution sprites. So let me just uh, make a new one here. All right, so let's do it this way. All right, so how about this multicolor thing? Okay, well, if we take a look over here, we have four colors. The first one, that's the background color, that's this one. That's the transparent one. And if you could see here in parentheses, it says zero, zero. So you remember that we could have four combinations with ones and zeros. And, and zero, zero, the uh, chunky pixels with zero, zero, that's the background color. So FG, that's foreground. So that's the spread color. That's one, zero. 
So those pixels with a one and a zero, that's the unique color for this sprite. Then we have two down here, M1, M2, multicolor one, multicolor two, multicolor one, that's zero one, that's a pixel with zero one, multicolor two, one one. So just by using a combination of two bits, we could have four or in practice three different colors. So now I could do something like this. And already you might be seeing that it's a little more chunky. One pixel is twice as wide as before. Here's our high resolution. This is our multicolor one. But now I could use my unique sprite color and I can draw inside here. And I can also use the other multicolor one. So now I could have a sprite with three different colors. So, um, hopefully this makes sense. We have this high resolution sprite with small pixels, smooth edges, and multicolor. Three different colors, but a little more chunky. The pixels are a little wider. Okay, hopefully this makes sense. What we're going to take a look at now is how we can move a sprite on the screen. Okay, so now we're back uh, looking at the Commodore 64 memory. All right, so we already talked quite a bit about the, the memory, but we need to take a closer look today because here we haven't looked at these red areas quite uh, a lot. But these are ROMs. Uh, so, but this one, this area D1000, I already said uh, a while back that this is a special area. Here I have written IO, but I have also written plus, plus, plus. So there's a ton of stuff going on here in this area, starting at address D1000. In fact, the address D1000 is important to us right now. Why? Well, let's take a look at the Commodore 64 memory map web page. Memory address D1000, that's the start of the VIC-2 chip, the video chip. That means that right here, you have a, the start of the, the video chip. Now, let's not uh, get confused about that and what we talked about last time. Address 0400 here. That's the screen RAM. The actual screen that we could see uh, with all the text, text characters. Now, the actual address D1000, as I said, is special to us right now. D1000, that's sprite, sprite zero coordinate. So we haven't talked about this, but let's just get that out of the way as well. So the Commodore 64 uh, supports eight sprites simultaneously. So you could have eight sprites on the screen at the same time. Um, yeah, by doing some clever tricks, you can have more than eight. There's uh, a trick called sprite multiplexing. We are not going to be looking at that in this course because uh, you have to know, uh, you have to be a, a really good programmer and it's a little complicated, so we're not going to be looking at that. But don't worry, you can make a great game with only eight sprites. 
So, the address D1000, that's the sprite 0, sprite 0, that's the first sprite, sprite 0 x coordinate. So that's the x position of the first sprite. D1001, that's the y coordinate of the first sprite. D1002, that's the x position of sprite 1, so the second sprite. D1003, that's the y position of the second sprite. So every sprite starting at address D1000 has their x position and y position. x position in the first address, y position in the second. So that's sprite 0, x and y, sprite 1, x and y, sprite 2, x and y, sprite 3, x and y, and so on. So starting at address D1000, we have the x and y coordinates for all eight sprites down here. All right. Now, um, there's another thing we need to, uh, to discuss as well. So there's one down here that says sprite 0 to 7 x coordinates. So, before we look at that one, we need to look at something else first. Here we have a picture from a web page called dustlayer.com. It's a good web page uh, that explains a lot of Commodore 64 things. What we're looking at right now are a bunch of numbers, but this shows us the resolution of the Commodore 64 screen. So maybe you're used to setting your screen resolution in Microsoft Windows, for example. But here we have 320 pixels across, 200 pixels down, like that. That's for the what I called the background area last time. So this dark blue area, which really is the one that's important to us. Um, because, like I said, we're not going to be doing anything here in the border area. So 320 times 200, that's the screen resolution. Now, I don't know if you could s can see a problem here, but if you can't, let me point it out for you. So this 200 pixels, that's really not a problem. This one, 320 pixels. That could be a problem for us. Why? Well, we're dealing with an 8-bit machine. And as we know by now, 8-bit machines can only have uh, deal with numbers between 0 and 255. This number is larger than 255 which means that we're going to have a problem storing 320 in a memory address, for example. That just doesn't work. We can't store a number larger than 255 inside a memory address. The CPU can't hold a number larger than 255. So the way that Commodore 6, uh, the Commodore um, engineers solved that was by making a byte here that's um, set up for sort of extending the sprite's position. So this bit, this byte in memory keeps track of Okay, let's imagine that uh, we're starting here. Uh, actually, we're starting a little off screen here. So this is zero over here. But uh, anyway, we get over here somewhere and then we get to 255 over here, perhaps. So uh, the Commodore engineers made a system that we could, uh, for each sprite, you can enable this bit that says, 
okay the sprite has gone uh, over here to 255 now we have to flip this bit for this particular sprite and what that does it says that we have crossed the 255 pixel border here so now we have to reset the position to zero the sprite position to zero and we go from zero one two three so then we can continue to move over to the right now as you probably can tell that's a tiny bit complicated and at least in the beginning it's hard to keep track of that stuff so we're gonna do what actually a lot of commercial games did in the 80s we are not going to bother with this area on the right side for sprites so our sprites will not be living in this area we will just stop our sprites here at uh, position 255 we won't be using this extended thing so we will just be using this area for our HUD heads up display so our score lives stuff like that that's a great position or that's a great area uh, for those kinds of things that way we don't have to worry about this complicated extended thing now it in the beginning okay so finally let's do some programming so like before i'm going to start my code with basic upstart 2 main and now i'm going to just make a sprite appear on the screen i'm not going to have any fancy graphics i'm not going to do anything crazy i'm not going to program any way to control the sprite or anything like that I'm just gonna make a sprite appear on the screen now by default at least for my Commodore 64 emulator here by default the sprite graphics is uh, just a, a solid color square so the entire sprite is filled with one color now that might actually be a little different on a real Commodore 64 because it has to do with uh, what's in the memory when you start your computer but for our sake here our sprite is going to be a, a white square so now I just want this thing to appear on the screen so I said that uh, memory address D1000 and D1001 those are the X and Y position of the first sprite. Now we can have positions from 0 to 255. I'm just going to say put this sprite at position 100, 100. So 100 in X position, 100 for the Y position. So the way I do that is just by writing LDA hashtag 100 and I'm just gonna store that STA in memory address D thousand so right now I've set the X position of the first sprite then I say LDA let's say 75 so the Y position is going to be 75 and I'm going to store that into memory address D1001. So now I've set the X position and the Y position of the first sprite on the Commodore 64. Remember, we have eight sprites. This was the first one. So that's enough, right? Mm, not quite. Because there's one more byte in the Commodore 64 memory that's super important for us here we need to activate this sprite we need to enable our sprite now because what we did right now was just set the position x and y position of the first sprite but we haven't enabled the sprite yet so 
the way we do that. Uh, and by the way, there's one memory address that keeps track of um, all our sprites. Is this sprite enabled? Yes, no. Is this sprite enabled? Yes, no. Is this sprite enabled? Yes, no. And so on. So that works out really great because one byte, as you know, that's eight bits. So there's one bit for every sprite. Is the sprite enabled? Yes, no. Zero, one. So I'm gonna say LDA hashtag. This is a binary number. So I need to use the percent sign. And then zero, 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 one. So, I'm going to store that in memory address D015. So, D015, that's the memory address that keeps track of what sprite is enabled or disabled. For a zero, that's a disabled sprite. So, here I'm disabling all sprites and they in fact they are disabled by default but I'm setting a 1 here on bit 0 once again remember this crazy bit thing start counting from the right so bit 0 bit 0 bit 1 <laughs> bit 0 bit 1 bit 2 bit 3 bit 4 and so on so for bit zero, that's the first sprite. So and, um, let me just write a comment here that says X position of sprite zero. This is the Y position of sprite zero. This thing is the um, sprite enable register or let's call it memory address. So I've set the x position, I set the y position, both of those for sprite zero, first sprite, then I set the one here in D015 to enable, so uh, let me just write a comment for that as well, enable sprite zero. So now I should be able to see um, a sprite on the screen. So let me once again close by writing RTS. So let's cross our fingers now and uh, Let's uh, save this file and run our code. Let's see what happens. All right. So actually, this uh, this is um, what you probably would see on a real Commodore 64, which means that this emulator is very accurate. In under other emulators that I have used, uh, the, the color or the shape of the sprite is a solid big color. Here is just a mess of whatever. But I'm sure you could see that there is in fact something here. There is a, a bunch of white garbage pixels here. This is our sprite. Right here. So in order to make this a little more interesting I'm going to show you one more thing. Here I have a pre-made program and this has actually four sprites. We have, um, we have actually the, the, the sprite that we were looking at earlier, this umbrella. This is a high resolution sprite. So as you can see, the edges are kind of smooth kind of detailed, but it's just one color. Then if we go down to this one, you can see that 
it's more colorful but especially here you could see that it's smoother up here but here the pixels are a little they're, they're wider down here we have this special case where I have placed a high resolution sprite on top of the uh, of a, of a multicolor sprite so what we're seeing down here is actually two sprites one on top of the other so one high resolution that's the black outline area the black outline area here that's high resolution it's a high resolution sprite but beneath that one there is a multicolor sprite so like I said we can combine those to make both a colorful and a smooth looking sprite alright so how did I do that well there's a lot of stuff going on in this code so I think it's too much for us to look at right now but down here at address 2000 I have crammed in some data that data is actually the sprite pattern the way the sprites look and if you see how I did that I set this up this way so this might actually remind you of when we talked about tables we have a label here and byte down here now when we did the tables the last time I said uh, label and byte 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 like that you can do it that way but you could also do it this way just by saying byte like this and by just by writing a comma you're adding another byte a comma you're adding another byte which means that this top row here that's three bytes so basically this is the same as a table it's just set up a little in a different way so three bytes here three bytes there if we count these rows you'll see that I have 21 rows here and maybe you can see here that in fact what we're looking at here is the sprite pattern this is my umbrella because all of these are just ones so maybe you can see it but in fact that's the umbrella so there's a one for every pixel for every zero that's just a transparent color so this is the actual um, I think yeah, it was black the actual black umbrella that we were looking at so for the multicolor one it's like we saw in the Excel spreadsheet here we have some uh, zero, uh, sorry, one zero, one zero, one zero, and one zero. We also have some one one, one one, one one, and one one. Because remember, in multicolor mode, the pixels are twice as wide because every pixels, every pixel has two bits. And remember, by using the, the combination of zero and one, we can have four different colors. But in practice, it's just three because one of them is the transparent color. So uh, the fourth um, combination of zero and one, that's zero, zero. All right, and that's the transparent color. So this might be a little harder to see but this is actually the multicolor umbrella if we go down here this is the umbrella overlay uh, that I called it uh, so um, this is let's not go super into detail but it's a multicolor sprite and this is uh, overlay the overlay one so these two the multicolor one here and the high resolution here those are used for this overlay technique 
laying one sprite over the other. And I have a multicolor here, and I have a high resolution here. Again, maybe you can see that this is an umbrella. Okay, so that's how it's stored. At, uh, starting at address 2000, that's where I crammed in the graphics. And it's, uh, if you just remember that every row of the sprite, that's three bytes. And every bit is a pixel, especially in high resolution. For multicolor mode, it's two bits for a fat pixel, wide pixel. So the, my graphics for our sprites is at address 2000. Now, there's a special memory address, or actually several memory addresses, that keeps track of what graphic to use for each sprite. So, let's take a look at that. So, here on the web page, the Commodore 64 memory map, we can see that here we have 0400. That's our screen RAM but that we looked at last time. 0400. That area goes all the way to 07FF. But, but, remember that I said that the Commodore 64 screen is 40 times 25. Uh, so it's 40 columns over here, 25 rows down here. So 40 times 25, that's 1000. So the Commodore 64 screen takes up 1000 bytes. If you remember, we talked about this a while ago, one kilobyte is 1024. Which means that the Commodore 64 screen doesn't quite take up one kilobyte. Almost, but not quite. Which means that there are 24 bytes at the end. So we're starting at memory address 0400 for the screen RAM, and it goes all the way to 7FF. But it doesn't go quite to 7FF because the screen RAM is just 1000 bytes. So what's there at the end, after the 1000 bytes? Well, the first thing is this. There are 16 bytes that are simply unused. So if you want, you could cram 16 bytes of data in here. But after that, from 07F8, there are eight bytes. So each of those eight bytes is what we call a sprite pointer. That means that that particular byte holds a number that points to the graphic for that particular sprite. So there's a sprite pointer for sprite 0, sprite pointer for sprite 1, sprite pointer for sprite 2, and so on. So that this little area, 8 bytes, keeps track of what graphic to show for every of our 8 sprites. So how does that work? Well, let's take a look here. Uh, I say here that the, the, um, the RAM location of the sprite graphics for sprite 0. Uh, so I load this thing, hexadecimal number 80. All right, let's come back to that in one second. But I store that into 07F8, 07F8, that's the sprite pointer for sprite zero, the first sprite. So what I'm saying here is that the graphics for the first sprite 
is here. Okay, so why hexadecimal 80? That doesn't really make sense. I mean, our sprite graphics starts here at memory address 2000. Hmm. Okay, first of all, you know by now that we can't store a memory address like 2000 in a memory cell. 2000 is way too large to store in a memory cell because it's way beyond 255. So let's not go super into detail in how you know, the, the math behind this or anything like that. Let's try to keep it simple now in the beginning. But we haven't really mentioned this. How much space does one sprite take in the Commodore 64 memory? Well, we have 24 bits this way. 21 bits this way. Okay, well, let's uh, do the byte thing instead. So I said that for every row on the sprite, that's three bytes. So one, two, three bytes. Okay, three bytes. Okay, but we have 21 rows. 21 rows down. Every row is three bytes. Okay, so I'm going to multiply three bytes with 21 rows. Three times 21. That's 63. So every sprite is 63 sprite graphic every sprite graphic is 63 bytes now the thing is that every sprite oh after every sprite graphic there's one byte that's unused so that we end up with 64 so in practice Every sprite takes up 64 bytes. Let's not wonder about why for now. Let's just accept every sprite graphic is 64 bytes. Let's also make this simple. For now, let's just try to accept this without going any more into detail. My sprite graphics starts here at address 2000. That's where all my sprite graphics starts. By the way, maybe you noticed it before, but here's the uh, unused byte. So I have 64 bytes here. Okay. So 64, that's 40 in hexadecimal. So like I said, keep it simple for now. So right now, Let's just try to remember this rule. I'm going to say 2000, the memory address where my sprites are stored. I'm going to divide that with hexadecimal 40. Hexadecimal 40, that was 64 in normal decimal. So I'm going to divide memory address 2000, 40, 64. Then I end up with 80. So that's how I end up with 80 here. So this number 80, that's what I store in the sprite pointer for sprite zero. So by storing 80 into the sprite pointer address for sprite zero, that's how I tell the Commodore 64 to use that specific graphic. If I wanted to specify the second sprite, I just write, uh, let's go up here. I write 81 instead. Remember hexadecimal now. If I wanted to use the uh, third sprite 
that would be 82. Okay, well, this video is getting long. We talked about a million things. Hopefully, you got all this. So, if you didn't get any of this, uh, any of the things that we talked about, don't worry too much, because what we talked about today is something that we're going to be working quite a lot with. So don't worry a bit about if you missed any parts of it today. I think uh, we've uh, worked pretty hard today and uh, I think it's enough. So I'll see you next time. Bye bye.